Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us here tonight. We hope that your spring is off to a good start where the weather is starting to get warmer, brighter, and we're really excited about that. And the Phillies are back in action. We decided to postpone this uh, town hall actually to this week because last week the, the Phillies home opener was last night. And what wound up happening? They postponed that. But we didn't want to drag this down the road any bit more. The Phillies are playing tonight, so we decided to go along with it anyway. Uh, my name is Bill Wasser, and I'm here with my favorite co-worker, Janelle King. And we are both communications coordinators within the Philadelphia Parking Authority's Department of Public Engagement. And tonight, we are going to be talking about the various ways that the Philadelphia Parking Authority attributes to the commerce in Philadelphia. Uh, but before we move on with the presentation itself, I just want to let everyone know that all attendees are currently on mute, but that does not mean we do not want to hear from you. Uh, in addition to that, following this monthly town hall, there will be a brief 30-second survey that we would really appreciate if you took the time to fill out. It really helps us gauge how these town halls are going and we do actually tailor future town halls based off of the feedback that we receive in those surveys. So with that, I'm going to get into the agenda of what exactly it is we are going to be talking about here tonight. Before we get into the various ways that we attribute to commerce in Philadelphia, we want to give you a brief overview of our mission, the history that goes along with that mission. We're going to talk quite a good amount about our off-street parking options, more commonly referred to as garage options, our on-street parking options, the various enforcement efforts that we're undertaking, the PPA's role as it relates to uh, regulating the for hire transportation industry, more commonly referred to as taxi cabs or Uber and Lyft, our airport par uh, parking options. And at the tail end of it, we're also going to provide you with some useful contact information should you have any further questions down the line. Uh, in addition to that, speaking of questions, should you have any questions throughout this uh, town hall, there is a uh, option to post a question in the web application that we're using. So feel free to drop it in there. We'll do our very best to address all questions within the time that we have. However, if we're unable to, uh, we do have your contact information. If you place a question in there, we will be sure to follow up with you. Now, first is the mission. Now, the overall mission of the Philadelphia Parking Authority is relatively simple. It's the imp improve the quality of life for Philadelphia's residents and visitors. That is and has always been and always will be our mission. And we have a lot of guiding principles to that mission, which is essentially what we're going to be talking about here tonight. But before we do that, I we just felt it necessary that you understand our history and by understanding our history, you will have a better uh, framework uh, as to how our mission is uh, has been developed. And this is, I'm, I'm actually a big history fan, so I loved researching uh, this initially when I started at the Philadelphia Parking Authority uh, a while ago. Uh, but our history uh, starts all the way back in the early part of the 1950s, I would say. But just to give you a framework of parking in general in Philadelphia, the first parking meter in Philadelphia was actually installed in 1940 in the uh, Center City Business District. Now, in 1947, what had occurred was is that the Pennsylvania State Legislature passed Act 53, more commonly referred to as the parking authority law. Now, what this did is it permitted municipalities such as Philadelphia to establish and create local parking authorities. So what they call that is enabling legislation. Now, with that enabling legislation, if you fast forward to 1950, city council, Philadelphia city council then passed an 
ordinance officially establishing the Philadelphia Parking Authority. And Janelle, I always forget the exact uh, date that that legislation went into. I think it was January 17th, I want to say. So for all intents and purposes, January 17th, 1950 is the day that the Parking Authority was born. Following that, well, first of all, at that point, the only role that the Philadelphia Parking Authority had was uh, uh, constructing and maintaining and uh, managing off-street parking facilities, like I said, more commonly referred to as garage parking. And in 1953, or uh, yeah, 1953, we established our first parking garage uh, in a, as a mixed-use development, including retail, office, and uh, general parking. Fast forward to 1954, 10th and Ludlow Street. This is right where Jefferson Hospital is. We had our first self-park garage. At that point, uh, it was in most garages, if not all of them, were actually a, a, a valet service of sorts. They had to, uh, the customer would pull into the garage and the parking garage attendant would then park the vehicle and return the vehicle for them. Uh, this actually changed that trend because but prior to that there was uh, risk management concerns as to whether or not a self-park garage was feasible and this garage changed that trend by showing that it was feasible. And another claim to fame that the Philadelphia Parking Authority has is that in 1959 we actually started building our independent small auto park that's right under the Philadelphia Visitor Center and it was actually the first garage uh, underground garage in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So we go from 1953 and uh, fast forward to 1961 where we began construction on our 8th and Filbert garage which is now referred to as the parkade on uh, now referred to the parkade on 8th and construction on that was actually completed in 1964. At the time, that was a prime location uh, right near Straw Bridges and the Lit Brothers Department Store. I'm not sure if anyone was around during that time. And that's actually our headquarters right now. In 1974, agreement was made to build and operate all on-site parking at Philadelphia International Airport. If you park on-site at Philadelphia International Airport, uh, you are a customer of the Philadelphia Parking Authority. And we'll be talking more about our airport operations a little bit uh, later in the presentation. 1975, the Gallery Mall garage opened to, with direct, direct access to the Gallery Mall, which of course now is referred to as the Fashion District. So that all occurred from 1950 up to 1975. And in 1982, another piece of legislation uh, enabling legislation was passed by the Commonwealth. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. Need to sip on water a little bit. <clears throat> anyway, in 1982, the state legislature then passed another piece of enabling legislation, which enabled municipalities to administer, enforce, and efficient, coordinated on street parking system. So city council then in 1983 passed that uh, enabling uh, ordinance to the Philadelphia Parking Authority and at that time that's when a lot of the responsibilities that we uh, that we currently have today were then transferred over to us amongst any, uh, many things but not limited to that includes the installation of parking meters, issuing parking violations, uh, administering our residential parking permit program amongst uh, amongst many other things but up until that point we only managed on uh, off street parking garages and then of course in 1983 another ordinance was passed which uh, permitted the Philadelphia Parking Authority to immobilize vehicles which is more commonly referred to as booting that history pretty much covers most of the things where we are up to this point, but it should also be noted that in 2002, we were also the designated by the state legislator to administer the red light uh, 
automated red light camera program, which has been immensely successful. And then in 2005, we were then uh, delegated the responsibilities of regulating taxi cabs and the four and all forms of the four higher transportation industry in Philadelphia, such as Uber and Lyft. And then most recently, we were uh, given the responsibility of administering the automated speed enforcement program, which is currently on Roosevelt Boulevard. And similar to the red light camera program, that has been immensely successful as well. So that's just a brief uh, cliff note hi uh, history of uh, the Philadelphia Parking Authority. And we hope by, like I said, understanding the history, you can uh, better understand our mission. Now, as I said, the first thing that we, the first responsibility that we had was constructing and uh, maintaining off-street parking garages. And I'm going to actually turn it over to Janelle to speak on that. So we're basically where we started from was off street parking and we refer to that but we refer to more so off street parking in house as an in house term. But if you are familiar with our parking um, garages or lots that's what we're referring to when we say off street parking off street is anything off of the curb so anything that brings you inside like a parking garage or a lot that's what we mean when we refer to parking I mean off street parking. So if you have any questions about our off-street parking operations, you can always find information on our website at philopark.org slash garages. We have parking garages in Center City, community parking lots in neighborhoods and resi well, residential and business districts. And we also operate three train station lots in the city of Philadelphia. This is just a list of some of our, well, not some, but our center city garages and also lots that are located in center city, in, in center city districts. So if you can look at the screen, we have about six or seven center city garages and we operate two different lots in the city. So this is just kind of like a map so you could just see the layout of the city and where our lots are, and garages are located. And, and more to that a little bit, Janelle, you'll notice on here, if you're familiar with the uh, uh, Philadelphia um, landscape, the a lot of these garages are within close proximity to a lot of the city's hotspots and tourist attractions. So Jefferson, we, I was say Jefferson Hospital, we have garages in Old City that are located near um, the historical districts of Philadelphia, and we also operate the Fashion District parking lot, which is conveniently attached to the Fashion District. In our garages, we offer specials. We have early bird specials, evening rates, um, nightlife specials, holiday rates, scooter flat rate parking, and we also do things that are going on, or we attribute to things that are going on in the city, like restaurant week. So normally during these times, we'll offer a special flat rate parking that way that you can come in and out and just play a, set, a flat rate for your parking stay. And like I said earlier, we operate over 40 um, community parking lots. These parking lots are strategically placed around the city, not only in residential, but also in business districts. So if you frequent any type of like small shopping area in the city of Philadelphia, there's typically or normally a community parking lot that is near the area of visiting. This is just to help with the residents and commerce in that part of the city. And then in addition to uh the uh, center city garages and dozens and dozens of community lots that we operate. We do also operate three train station lots uh, should you not want to drive and park in center city uh, for $2 a day up to 24 hours. And those train station locations are, <clears throat> excuse me, Front Rock Rail Station, Fox Chase Railroad Station, and the Torresdale railroad station so just know you have if you're in that general area and you don't want to actually park in the city and it's more economical for you to take public transit and to get into center city we do operate these garages or these uh, these train station lots as well 
that's pretty much the gist of our off-street operations, but we're going to move on to our on-street uh, on street options and operations. And there's a lot of different elements part of our on-street uh, operations. And number one, most common is the metered parking. Uh, we do provide a residential parking permit program. We do provide designated motor and scooter zone, motorcycle and scooter zones throughout the city. We do administer and install loading zones for businesses, valet zones, as well as designated taxi stands. Now, when it comes to metered parking, what it, the main thing we try to do and the main purpose of metered and paying for parking in general is to encourage turnover. We have parking rates that are in place in order to encourage people to actually move away from the spot after a certain period of time. And what this does, it frees up the spot, it lets another customer, resident, or visitor park at that public on-street parking space and then go about their business in Philadelphia, whether or not that is maybe going out to dinner or maybe they have a meeting downtown. So we actually try to encourage that turnover so more people can patronize the city. We have two payment options when it comes to our meter parking. We have our pay-by-play parking kiosks, and we also have our widely popular mobile payment app meter up, which is just about at, I believe, almost 2 million downloads at this point, Janelle, if I remember correctly. But yeah. more on meter up, um, the convenient thing about meter up is one, you, you can obviously remotely pay for your parking, but you're also able to re remotely extend a parking session. And a little bit deeper dive into that is our meter up application actually is programmed to encourage turnover as well. With meter up, you're able to park past the posted time limit if you choose to, if you want to, but if you do so, you will be paying a little bit extra. And again, folks, it's about turnover. We want to turn over these parking spaces and that's why the, uh, the pricing within the app is reflected as such. It, generally, if you want to park past the posted time limit in Philadelphia where uh, payment is required, it's usually more economical for, uh, for you to uh, park at an off street garage. And something else that we should mention as well is that our garages are the cheapest in the city. And that is by design. Part of our mission is to ensure that consumers are not, do not become victims of, uh, let's just say uh, price gouging. We strategically have our prices a bit lower than surrounding competition to prevent such a, a surge in off street parking prices. So that's one of the guiding principles to our mission as well. And just one more time, if you haven't already, I would highly recommend downloading Meter Up if you do need to park at a metered space in Philadelphia. Uh, that essentially covers the metered parking aspect. Uh, but I'm gonna and I was going to say, right before you now. jump over to the slide, yeah. I was going to say, and that's why in our off-street operations or in our garages, we offer special discounts. So that way, if you know that you're coming downtown and you're going to be, or in Center City, and you may be longer than what the times on the sign allow, um, it's easier and also cheaper to park in the garages. So if you come early in the morning, we have an early bird special, or if you're just coming down for like, the, you know, say an evening in Center City, you're able to pay for an evening rate or get an evening rate at our parking garages. So that way you don't have to, you know, continue to feed the meter. You can park in a garage, you know, in the off street garage, just play a flat rate and you will be okay for that evening as opposed to having to come out, you know, worry about refeeding your meter. But if you have the app, you can also do it from there too. So going into other parking um, at the curb options. So if you're an individual or a resident of the city of Philadelphia, we offer a residential parking program. So if you live in a center city district or any district that is residential parking, you're um, permitted to apply for a residential parking permit. 
which then also allows you to park past the, the posted time limits in those areas. Um, as long as you're a resident and you can prove that everything matches, you are able to apply for a permit. Um, we also have a motorcycle permit program where say if you, you know, you, you may have a vehicle, but it's more economical for you to drive your motorcycle downtown, maybe to work or to shop. You can buy a motorcycle um, or scooter permit that allows you to park in our motorcycle and scooter corrals without limits. So, and also in residential areas too that have um, the residential parking permit program. We also offer permits for businesses. So if you're a contractor and you have a client that's in the city and they live either on a residential block or there's meter parking near their home, you can apply for a contractor um, parking permit. This allows you to park at the meters and in residential areas without being timed and ticketed for the um, a lot of times that are on the, sign, the posted signs. We also offer loading zones for our businesses. So that way your customers can, you know, pull up, say that they, it may be a bakery or cleaners where your, your customers aren't staying all day. They don't, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time to patronize, um, patronage your, your business. So these loading zones are offered to businesses so that way they can um, help their customers come in and out with ease of their, um, their business. We also have hotel loading zones. So if you visit the city and you're staying at a hotel, that hotel has a designated zone where you're allowed to pull up, get your bags and stuff out the car, get checked in, and then go find parking without any type of um, ramifications for that while you're loading and unloading at that hotel. And then for restaurants and businesses that have a valet, um, a valet zone, or you can pay for a valet zone that allows your customers to pull up they have a valet service to come and park the car. So that also allows, you know, an allotment of space for your customers. Motorcycle and scooter zones are designated around the city. Like I spoke earlier about the permits in designated um, corrals, a motorcycle or scooter could pay a $5 flat rate to park during the day. Um, or and outside of the times that are posted on the sign, it's also free, but only for motorcycle and scooters zone, only for motorcycles and scooters. So if you operate a motorcycle or a scooter, it's beneficial to park in the corrals for a flat rate fee, as opposed to tying up a meter for a car that you know may be there, also they may also want to park. Um, like I mentioned earlier about the, the loading zones for the businesses. So we have truck loading zones, which are mainly for commercial trucks that are um, bringing in goods to a business. Say, you know, like if you have a restaurant, your restaurant needs food, you need uh, maybe napkins and things of the like. So the truck loading zones are for these trucks to come and park. That way they can service the businesses in the city. The hotel loading zones, um, like I said earlier, are for hotels. So if you have a hotel, a, a bed and breakfast, or somewhere where people come and stay, they are able to park and you're able you know, to park outside of your establishment while they unload their packages and their luggage. Loading zones are for anyone, um, a business and or parking. So if you have a business, you're um, permitted to apply for a loading zone outside of your business. So that way, like I said, your customers will have ease with patroning your business. And passenger loading zones are typically outside of like either hospitals or anything of the kind where you may only be dropping off a passenger. And they're, when we call them passenger loading zones, they're for passenger size vehicles. So a loading, a loading zone is technically, I guess, will a vehicle that doesn't have, um, that's of a bigger size. Like say if your, your car is just a regular passenger car, you're allowed to park in a passenger loading zone and or a loading zone. If you have truck tags, you are permitted from parking in the passenger loading zones. Valet zone parking. Like I said earlier in, this, um, in the presentation, if you have a restaurant or a business where you would like your customers to be able to pull up and have the service of them, someone else parking their car or finding a parking space 
for their vehicle, this would be something that you could apply for for your business. Um, loading zones are enforced by our officers. And if you are not a valid valley company, then you are not permitted to park in those spots. So those spots are solely and mainly for valet parking cars or valet operations. So we have taxi stands that are designated spots around the city of Philadelphia um, and also like typical hot spots. We have some at the airport, at the train stations. So that way, if you're coming into the city, there are different places where these taxi cabs or you can find the taxi cab, Uber and or Lyft. Um, they, have per, they have metered parking rates and also flat rate trips to and from Center City and the airport. And they also have wave accessible vehicles. And uh, just to uh, piggyback on that, WAVE means wheelchair accessible vehicles. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Thanks, Janelle. Uh, folks, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the enforcement, uh, additional enforcement efforts that we have in place that further attribute to commerce in the city of Philadelphia. And first and foremost, we touched on this a good amount already. But the main purpose of our on-street enforcement program is to, one, ensure public safety, enhance the quality of life for Philadelphia's residents and visitors by ensuring a safe and continuous traffic flow while encouraging turnover. And again, we talked about turnover a, a good amount through timed parking regulations, such as what Jill, Janelle had mentioned with our residential parking permit program and through our tiered pricing in meter up again with the uh, rates increasing if you are parking for a longer period of time and just actually the base rate of what you're paying to park on the street so that stuff like that ultimately our main goal and top priority is public safety but in doing so, through these efforts, we are also able to encourage commerce through consistent turnover in a safe and orderly fashion. Now, some of the uh, initiatives that we've undertaken in recent, in recent years and right now, it's actually quite a few. Uh, we actually partner with the city, or I apologize, SEPTA, the Philadelphia Police Department and the SEPTA Transit Police to ensure that bus lanes are cleared of illegally parked vehicles. Guys, I don't know if you've ever been on a bus uh, and a, the bus lane is blocked by somebody illegally parked, making you late for work and even worse, uh, causing a uh, safety concern if the bus needs to actually go into the driving lane. What it ultimately does is it creates congestion and congestion is, is bad for the economy. It's an inconvenience and uh, it could lead to uh, uh, safety issues as well. And on that note, we've actually partnered with the city, uh, the Philadelphia Streets Department to train the newly established public safety officers, which are beginning to issue violations relating to public safety in Philadelphia. We've also uh, we've also uh, undertaken a new initiative in which we are on the lookout for vehicles that are blatantly trying to avoid enforcement by not displaying a license plate. If you are not held accountable for the violations that you're issued, uh, then you would uh, then you're more uh, inclined to commit those violations in the future. And we don't like doing, and we don't like seeing that, which is why we have undertaken that initiative as well. And more information to come in the weeks to, in the weeks to come, we are also going to be doing a parking enforcement officer bike patrol initiative, in which we will have officers mounted on bicycles, patrolling our city's uh, um, designated bike lanes, ensuring that they're not. Uh, uh, blocking ease of access for cyclists who who are trying to use that lane. So more information on that to come, but th those are just some of the initiatives that we are uh, recently undertaken.
So like Bill said earlier, when he was given the history of the parking authority, we were tasked with um, the taxi cab, Uber and Lyft operations or governing those operations. So we govern the taxi cab, Uber and Lyft um, and also limousine drivers. We wanna regulate and ensure safety and compliance of those drivers. So while you are visiting or taking a ride in the city, we wanna make sure that you are number one, safe or in a vehicle that is safe and also okay to be, to be in and riding around. <laughs> we also um, have a team that officiates the lost item retrieval. So if you say you forgot something in your cab and we've gotten some wild and crazy requests of people leaving things in the back of cabs. But we have our team over at the um, taxi and limo division that works with the taxi cab drivers and Uber and Lyft for that way um, to return your lost or forgotten item. That's in that same form, you can also say if you have a good experience in a cab or you want to complain about a taxi cab, Uber, or Lyft driver, maybe your experience and your experience wasn't as pleasurable as you wanted it to be in a taxi cab, Uber, or Lyft, you can let us know. And that way, our team will work with those drivers to get the problem resolved and investigate the matters further. Our airport parking operations. If you park anywhere on site at the airport, you're parking with the Philadelphia. You're parking with the Philadelphia Parking Authority. We have garage parking, economy lot, short-term parking, and like I mentioned earlier, with the taxi stands. This is in the airport. We have designated taxi stands, so that way, if you're coming in or leaving the city, you can get a cab and have ease of access in and around the city of Philadelphia. So we covered a lot of information in our presentation today, but if you have any questions or any concerns or just want to know anything else about the Philadelphia Parking Authority, you can always go to our website at philipark.org. Um, you can reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our handle on all social media channels is at philiparking. Um, and like I said, brief recap of all the things that we've gone over. We went over our off street parking operations, which are garages, community parking lots, our train station lots, our on street parking operations, meters, permits, and loading zones, hotel loading zones, ballet zones, all the things for um, individuals and for businesses, and our enforcement and regulation policies, or some of the things that we do and why we do the things that we do on the street. Thanks, Janelle. Um, as we get to the tail end of our uh, presentation here, just want to thank you again for joining us here tonight. Again, this was brought to you by the Philadelphia Parking Authority's Department of Public Engagement. Uh, I'd also like to take this time to let everyone know to mark their calendars for May 4th at 6 p.m., where we'll be hosting our next virtual town hall meeting. Uh, a registration link will be available on our website, uh, so keep your eye out for that. The topic is to be determined right now, and hopefully we won't have to push back uh, this uh, this town hall like we did with the Phillies, but we'll, we will see what happens. Just keep an eye on our website. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you wouldn't mind taking the time to fill out the brief survey immediately following this presentation janelle and i would really appreciate it and like i said we will use that feedback as we put together next month's monthly virtual town hall meeting uh, and I say I if you have, oh sorry no, go, ahead. go ahead i was going to say and if you have any parking concerns comments questions or anything like that you can always reach out like i said to us on social media a lot of the information that we cover tonight is on our website, but if you have any personal questions or anything that's tailored to your community, if you have an issue that you need to address, you can always reach out to us on social media. Thank you, Janelle. And uh, again, thank you for joining us here tonight. And uh, hope everyone continues to enjoy the pleasant weather that we're having here tonight. Again, my name is Bill Wasser I'm with Janelle King. And good night. Good evening, and hopefully to hopefully see you next month. Good night, everyone. Bye.